Our last segment ended with diplomats at the Japanese embassy translating a declaration of war for delivery to the U.S. American military bases were on guard. They just didn't know where an attack would happen. Nimitz uh, uh, looked at the bright side. He says the, the Japanese just blew it. They didn't, get the, they didn't get our oil and they didn't get our yards. Seventy years ago, Japan was preparing to declare war on the United States. Training for the attack started in the spring of 1941 under the command of Admiral Chuichi Nagumo. Nagumo's fleet included all six carriers in the Japanese Navy, 24 other vessels, and a separate group of submarines to sink American warships that escaped the carrier strike force. Sunday morning in Honolulu was for sleeping in, making pancakes, and going to church. People living on the island of Oahu paid little attention to the hum of planes in the distance, believing they were part of an army or navy drill. 130 vessels of the U.S. Pacific Fleet were parked at their moorings, except the Pacific Fleet's three aircraft carriers. The Japanese strike force took up position 230 miles north of Oahu. Early December 7th, there were men at their posts on base manning the watch. At 6.40 a.m., the destroyer USS Ward identified the conning tower of a Japanese submarine off the coast of Pearl Harbor. The ward attacked and sunk the submarine. They reported the sinking as a routine event. Also, before 7 a.m., the Opana Point radar station detected a large flight of aircraft approaching the island from the north. They thought the aircraft were a flight of B-17s coming from the mainland. The first wave of the Japanese carrier strike force had 183 aircraft. They attacked shortly before 8 a.m., hitting the base airfields and the fleet anchored in Pearl Harbor. The leader of the first attack wave sent coded messages back to Admiral Nagumo that the attack had begun. When there was not a single U.S. Army or Navy plane responding, he radioed Tora Tora Tora, meaning Tiger Tiger Tiger. These code words meant the surprise had been achieved. Army Air Corps airplanes, parked wing to wing as defense against possible sabotage, were parked at the airfields of Hickam, Wheeler, and Bellows. Naval aircraft were lined up at Ford Island and Kaneohe Bay Naval Air Stations. Marine aircraft were parked at Ava Marine Corps Air Station. The airfields were hit hard, destroying the aircraft before they could rise to intercept the Japanese. Hundreds of planes were destroyed on the ground and hundreds of men were killed or wounded. The primary targets were the more than 100 ships anchored in Pearl Harbor, including the eight battleships. USS Nevada, with their commander ashore, flooding below decks, and against incredible odds, got underway and headed to the channel to cheers from witnesses. The ship survived three bomb hits and kept moving, but the possibility of blocking the channel forced her courageous crew to beach the ship. I was on the West Virginia, which was a battleship, and it was the first ship that was sunk at Pearl. Uh, many of the battleships were in the harbor, and uh, half of them got sunk, and half of them didn't, but I was on the first one down. USS West Virginia took six aerial torpedoes and then sunk into Pearl Harbor. USS Oklahoma, hit by nine torpedoes, capsized in less than 12 minutes. Couldn't see a thing, it was black, 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 dark, dark. And so I just tried to, there were bodies floating all around me. And uh, then I saw a, a light. Hundreds of men were trapped below decks. Some were trapped for more than 25 hours and rescued. 429 lost their lives. We're down about 50 feet deep in the depths of Pearl Harbor. I swam and swam and swam and finally got to the surface and the, there was burning fuel oil all around me. At about 8.10 a.m., an armor-piercing bomb hit USS Arizona's forward ammunition magazine. The explosion and fire instantly killed over 1,000 crewmen. The repair ship USS Vestal was moored to Arizona. The explosion and fireball burst 500 feet in the air, blew men off nearby ships, 
and snuffed out the flames on the Vestal, saving the repair ship. A second wave of 170 Japanese planes arrived at 8.40 a.m. and was met with gunfire. The strike force continued to pound the airfields, battleship row, and the shipyards. At 10 a.m., the attack was over. Admiral Nagumo did consider a third attack, but knowing the absent U.S. carriers could pose a threat, he ordered the force home. The Admiral felt the two waves of attack had neutralized the Pacific Fleet, which was the objective. 21 vessels, including all eight battleships, were sunk or damaged. 170 aircraft were destroyed, and 150 were damaged. American loss of life totaled 2,390 military personnel and civilians. 1,177 men, nearly half the fatalities, died on USS Arizona. The Japanese lost 29 aircraft, 5 midget submarines, and 65 men were killed. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't realize that, that we only lost two battleships. We lost Oklahoma and Arizona. Within weeks, three battleships were returned to service. Eventually, all but three of the ships sunk or damaged were completely repaired and returned to duty. The attack united a nation behind a complete commitment to victory in World War II. 44 months of war followed the attack on Pearl Harbor, and sea power determined the course of the struggle. There was a decisive shift in naval warfare, from the battleship to the dominance of carrier-based aircraft in the submarine. Japanese naval forces spearheaded their conquest of Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific, where they were blunted by U.S. Navy ships and aircraft in the battles of Coral Sea and Midway. This led the way to U.S. victories on Japanese-occupied islands, and ultimately to U.S. victory in the Pacific on August 15, 1945. Throughout the latter half of the 20th century, America grew into a world superpower with the responsibility to safeguard freedom and to answer the call when and where threatened. Our nation is grateful and indebted to those who gave their lives on December 7, 1941. We remain steadfast to the cry, Remember Pearl Harbor, with a strong Navy that provides security, stability, and sea power for our people and around the globe. America will never forget the attack on Pearl Harbor. It's one of the reasons that to this day, our Navy continues to train and prepare for any scenario.